What is really going on here, guys and girls, is, is Russia, Moscow, and NATO all preparing for something? Would the UK's and the Americans help? Would the Turks help as well? So that's my fear is, or the USA will help too. But the thing is, let's see what this video says about Putin and all the other countries that are there. NATO is calling on Russia to withdraw its well, NATO. from the border with Ukraine. 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 The Russian soldiers, heavily armed, have deployed to the north and south of Ukraine over the past couple of weeks. NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg met with the Ukrainian Foreign Minister in Brussels today, and he made this appeal to Moscow. Russia's uh, considerable military buildup is unjustified, unexplained, and deeply concerning. Russia must end this military buildup uh, in and around Ukraine, stop its provocations, and de-escalate immediately. Here to break this all down for I mean, us. There's any side one war, really, but Holly Williams, who's joining us from London. Holly, it's so good to see you. So, um, tell us about this military buildup on the Ukrainian border. Is there a concern that Russia is making yeah, any London. kind of military moves? Good morning, Vlad and Anne-Marie. Well, I mean, Ukraine is certainly sounding uh, very alarmed, uh, very perturbed. She sounds like she's from London, but she's speaking Australian. 40,000 Russian troops on their eastern border, along with tanks, along with artillery, yeah. and then another 40,000 Russian troops in Crimea. Remember also... I mean, London, Australia. ...with Russia, uh, Russia annexed Crimea back in 2014. What did that look like? Russia sent troops into the Crimean Peninsula, um, and in about the, the course of about a month, they seized control of Crimea. Remember also that since 2014, there has been an ongoing war in eastern Ukraine between government forces um, and rebel separatists um, who are backed by Russia. That conflict doesn't get a lot of attention these days, but Ukraine says that it has resulted in the deaths of 14,000 people, um, including several Ukrainian soldiers killed in recent days. So for very understandable reasons, the Ukrainians are very concerned and they've taken their concerns to NATO, to Brussels. However, does that mean that an attack by Russia is likely? Well, some Russia watchers think not. They think this, this is much more about, um, about Vladimir Putin, about Moscow posturing, uh, perhaps testing NATO, perhaps testing the new US president, Joe Biden, seeing um, how he'll respond. And perhaps also, and we've seen this in the past, attempting to, d to distract the domestic Russian audience away from Russia's own problems. In fact, one Russia watcher mm -hmm. even suggested that this is an attempt by the Russians to distract attention away uh, from the plight of Russian dissident Alexei Navalny, who has some pretty serious health problems and who is currently languishing in a Russian prison. So you mentioned that it's been seven years since Russia illegally annexed Crimea. Um, and I remember at the time, you know, having conversations about why Vladimir Putin is doing this. And some of the people that we spoke to here on CBSN talked about this general philosophy that Crimea it, it should have always been Russia, that um, that ethnically the people there are Russian, and, and Russia feels like they're sort of taking back what has always been part of Russia. But now you mentioned this idea that this is a really convenient way of distracting the Russian people from, you know, perhaps some of the failings on Vladimir Putin's part. What do you believe, or, or what do experts believe, is the end game here? So when, I, when it comes to the ongoing conflict in eastern Ukraine, um, I think it's worth considering the idea that Vladimir Putin and Russia don't have an end game. You know, when, when Vladimir Putin has, mm. a, has a clear goal, he's generally not very cryptic about it. You know, he, he generally sets about achieving it. So when Russia wanted to prop up the Syrian regime in Syria, um, it did it. It intervened militarily in Syria and it achieved that. When Russia wanted to annex Crimea, it did it. It sent in troops and it annexed the Crimean Peninsula in, in the course, you know, of just over a month. So I think when it comes to eastern Ukraine, it's worth considering the possibility that there's no particular end game. Um, in sight, and that, and that rather having an open wound in eastern Ukraine, having an ongoing conflict, um, destabilizing Ukraine, making Eastern Europe um, and Europe more generally anxious, um, that that serves a purpose in itself for Russia, and 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 one of those purposes may be once again distracting the Russian public away from problems in their own country. You know, Ali, as you're aware, the NATO Secretary General was asked about Ukrainian membership in NATO. Mm -hmm. He said, 
that it was a matter for NATO allies to decide and not Russia. So how would inclusion of Ukraine impact the region? Well, it would pretty clearly make the Ukrainians feel a lot safer because under the terms of NATO membership, um, if they were attacked militarily, then all of the other members, and that includes the US, um, would have to come to their defense. However, what would that look like in Ukraine, given that Russia has already annexed Crimea? I mean, I don't know um, the answer to that question. And then you, you have to consider that along with making Ukraine feel safer, it would obviously enrage Russia, enrage Russia and, and make the Russians feel much less safe. We've seen that before with other U Eastern European countries joining NATO, and in particular, um, the Baltic states. So according to some, allowing Ukraine to become a NATO member would actually destabilize the entire region further. And that's clearly part of the reason why Ukraine has not yet been accepted as a NATO member. Foreign and defense ministers of NATO countries are set to hold a video meeting, though, um, tomorrow. And they're expected to discuss Ukraine. How significant is this meeting? Well, what Ukraine very clearly wants, and it's saying this very openly, is some kind of practical support. Um, be that NATO mm. membership, be that some kind of uh, military backup from its allies, um, be that, you know, um, more, more sanctions applied to Russia to discourage it from doing um, what it's doing. So um, what we'll have to sort of keep our eyes on is whether Ukraine gets any of that practical support that it's looking for. Wow, guys and girls, um, what would you think about that? Is it going to happen or not? Some people hope it doesn't. Anyway, see you next video. Peace. Well, thank you, Jeremy.